good to go, Steph? Good to go. Okay, excellent, thanks. Um, welcome everybody to the Housing Advisory Committee meeting on uh, July 5th, 2021. Um, so if we have somebody who can move the agenda or does anybody have any comments about the agenda for today? No, can we move that and second it? Yeah, all in favor? I think we yep. can move that one along. Okay, good. Um, Adoption of the minutes. Uh, does anybody have any comments about the minutes from our last meeting on June 7th? I know I read them at the time soon after. Um, no. And we just, uh, yeah. Well, I didn't really have a, co a comment to mm -hmm. the meeting. The, the, the minutes are fine, mm -hmm. but before I forget to do that, what I kind of noticed is that um, when we give, for instance, an example of a, a, a pilot project, you know, pilot mm -hmm. project, people that uh, can scare people too. But it is just actually an, uh, an example of spot zoning. And, and the reason I'm saying that is that spot zoning is used quite extensively by the city of North Vancouver. Okay. And in a way, it's the same process. You consider a project on its own merit. But if you say pilot project, which I don't personally don't mind, but some people may think that it's too experimental and maybe that shouldn't happen. Okay, well, let's put that in the discussion Yep. Um, maybe the Google Doc, I'll just make a note at the bottom about um, language of pilot project versus spot zoning. Well, pilot project is just one example of spot zoning. Oh, okay. That's kind of the point, right? Yep. It doesn't have to be so experimental. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Any other comments on the, um, on the minutes? Seeing none, does somebody want to move? Maureen's moving, somebody second. Michael second. second. Okay, everybody in favor? Yeah, okay, moved. All right, uh, next, and I think pretty much, oh, public comments. I don't think I don't there's think anybody from the public yeah. here. Nope, okay, great. Um, business arising from the minutes. Uh, and I think this is pretty much the main crux of what we're doing today, um, is uh, we're gonna use this as a working session to action. And if you look at the minutes from the last one, we sort of pick topics for our next several meetings and we're gonna sort of work those along together. So using this as a working session, which is great. So today's topic that we're gonna work through is um, can we make um, suggestions uh, from the housing needs report um, to move those up to council that they could consider as, you know, either strategic priorities or something that they could, um, they could uh, really take action on. So actionable items, there we go. Um, actionable items list development. Yeah. Okay. So, and, and we had that Google doc going, uh, I'm just sort of looking through, I, I apologize. I haven't looked at this Google doc in a while. So, um, we have some notes in there from Glenn or vice chair and, I'm sure, and Maureen, I know can see has done some comments. So um, do we wanna just maybe work through those at the top of the list we've got? Um, yeah. How, yeah. Do that? How do I open that? The Google doc, it's in the chat, the, in the chat from the Zoom meeting, there is a link. Mm -hmm. And so if you click on that, it should open in a web browser and you should uh -huh. be able to be there. There's at least three of us on there now. I love how they name us. There's anonymous Buffalo. Anonymous elephant and anonymous ar armadillo. <laughs> do you want me to do the armadillo? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, now we've got anonymous kiwi and anonymous ferret. There we go. So let's let's not take any anything personal about what what animal we've been randomly assigned. Maureen, could, could I suggest doing something before we go into the Google Doc? Please and, and see see what you think of it of the idea. Just for each of us to take a few moments and and to write down three things we think, based on our experience as the Housing Advisory Committee, three things that council could do that would make an impact on housing. Hmm. Just, to, just okay. to see what comes yeah, up. Let's just kind of take two minutes and just you know grab a piece of paper or post it or whatever you need to do and think about those top three things or however many you can come up with. And so sorry, this is what council could do, action items council could take, that could actually improve the housing situation on Bowen.
Okay, we'll take one more minute. I'm, I'm partway through. Okay, is everybody ready to come back and share? I think we lost Steph, but um, hopefully she'll join us again. Okay. Sorry, I'm um, here, I just had a bite to eat. Oh, ha, that's okay. Oh, so I see when you turn your video off, you disappear. That's fine. Feel free to turn your video off, Steph, don't worry. <laughs> um, I'll just make, just in the interest of sort of time, uh, unless anybody else wants to, I'll just write this at the bottom of the Google Doc as people kind of call them out. Does anyone, Maureen, would you like to go first or do you want to hear from us first? Um, from you guys first. Okay. Um, Fritz, Ron, do you have any, do you want to, anybody want to go first? Ron, maybe you? Okay. Well, I'm the new guy in the block, so uh, yeah, don't yeah, take okay. anything I suggest too seriously, but the, here's what occurred to me. Uh, first, uh, reduce uh, the, the requirement for building a second house on an existing lot. I understand the requirement now is that a lot be at least 0 0.9 of an acre before a second structure can go up. And uh, uh, I don't know why it uh, would have to be more than about a quarter of an acre. Uh, second, um, I wonder if the municipality could create some kind of rental uh, uh, rental coordinating office. H here's what I'm getting at. Uh, there are a lot of people uh, that, that, that own property on Bowen Island, which, uh, uh, well, well, absentee owners, if you will, people like me. Uh, and th their, their, their homes are empty most of the time. If those places could, uh, uh, if, if some of those could be brought into the rental market, it, it would be a good thing. But speaking for myself, uh, it's quite a hassle. Uh, we, we have rented out our place in the past, but when we live in Edmonton and we're renting a place in Edmonton, it, 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 it's, it's hard to find the right tenants and it's hard to keep on top of the job. Uh, I, I wondered if there were a rental agency on Bowen Island uh, that, 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 that would uh, take responsibility for finding tenants uh, monitoring the property uh, and collecting uh, a, a reasonable share of the rent uh, as their operating costs. I wouldn't expect this to be subsidized by the municipality. It should be fully paid for by the, uh, uh, by the, by the, by the property owners. Uh, in, in other words, uh, something to just to, to reduce the uh, administrative trivia and the risk of being a, an absentee landlord. Uh, third, uh, my suggestion would be uh, have uh, developers or potential developers on Bowen Island been asked in any formal manner, uh, what obstacles do you currently face to doing more developments on Bowen? Yeah. That's my stuff. <clears throat> okay, that's great. Thank you. Um, Fritz, what have you got for us? Well, some of them are predictable. But yes, mine are too. <laughs> so I thought like um, kind of uh, summarize changes in the land use bylaw that are actually easy. Like I would say to um, uh, Danielle, if you're like an omnibus, here's the second one. Uh, <laughs> like, you know what I mean? The things that actually seem to be not confrontational and maybe can be done quickly. Um, true or not. Then I thought, um, I kind of think that the, it keeps coming back and I actually did take a look at uh, the kind of review I did of the uh, OCP and the LUB quite a while ago now, before COVID. And if you read it again, the document gets even better because um, <laughs> you kind of see clearly that things are repeated and repeated 
um, some some um, advice to the municipality and council is actually really good and, and it's current. And some other things are absolutely not current, you know? But the, um, uh, for instance, this whole thing that I keep repeating, two-tier zoning, amenity zoning, all that kind of stuff, it's actually in the OCP, you know? It's, you, can, you can take the number, it's there, and it says it wants council to do it. It's almost like, like, um, at least if we use the good parts of the OCP, <laughs> that's, that's amazing. So I thought that, that pre-zone two-tier is so easy and it, I don't think you have to be so specific because we have an OCP. So if you have a two-tier zoning and it's really conditional and the people say, for, well, how do I get the second tier? Well, if you read the OCP and here are some things we're trying to do, it is not like you have to be overly prescriptive because then you also... Um, maybe put roadblocks if, uh, in what people may want to do. But you can use it for anything. You know, I kind of sent a letter before to, to, um, to Danielle and to one of the counselors that the same principle uh, can be used, for instance, at Cape Roger Curtis to get more green space and to get more environmental protection. It's just a matter of doing it, you know? And I don't think these things are you're not trying to redesign a whole neighborhood. You just say, from, okay, here's a vehicle that may, may do something. It enables, you know, if it, people don't respond, it's not the biggest deal because like, <laughs> that's the idea with it. Anyway, so um, then I thought that um, somehow I could see that a lot of people in the community, um, if there would be something more visual, like an example or something, you know what I mean? And they say, oh, oh, we're kind of like that. And if it wouldn't be presented as, it's almost like a preview to, uh, uh, you know, expression of interest, you know? I mean, <laughs> where do people find what they could possibly do? Like, some, like maybe we can put something together and then people can see it or, you know, see it on a website or something, right? Uh, okay, so then, um, I thought it was kind of interesting. And then the, the, the two thoughts that, that I have, one of them to get things moving, I wrote down really simple, think septic. You know what I mean? Because I'm getting kind of tired of everything, that everything delays everything else. You know what I mean? And septic has been used in Bowen forever. Everything is basically on septic and little developments can also be on septic. And as we say before, there can be that system of other septic now can later be connected. And then I also think that the idea of to think island wide is really important because I really don't believe that what is now sitting in the OCP and it comes back and back, it comes actually back in a very calculated way that very little can be done outside of the code. And um, I do believe it's wrong. I don't think it's in the interest of the community. I think there has to be um, a way to live a, on Bowen that uh, is sustainable, but not just in the village, but really on, on island wide. And it doesn't mean you have to build everywhere. It just means that there's, uh, there's, there's pockets of opportunities that um, uh, can be realized. Like the whole idea that if people want to rent or if they want to live in, a, in smaller homes, that it only happens in the code. I think that's just a, a lost opportunity. Mm -hmm. Like I can see people really like to live in a rural area and maybe it's a little cluster and it sits on 40 uh, whatever uh, acre uh, lot that is protected, but, uh, and they have a little bit, they feel connected to maybe uh, a little bit of um, uh, architectural activities. You know what I mean? <laughs> so like you feel you belong there. Mm -hmm. Well, and the idea that people don't, that you, that you either have a car or you walk, it's, it, I find it also an old fashioned way of, of, of thinking. Um, there's people that do not have a problem with moving around. <laughs> but anyway, I'm just thinking is that, that islands think septic and think island wide. I believe that's important. Like if you really want Bowen to move into the future, there has to be opportunities island wide. That doesn't mean you destroy the island. It means you preserve the island. You know. Mm. Anyway, this one. Yeah. Good. Thanks, Fritz. Um, Daniel, did you want to go, or do you want me to go first? Or did you? Um, why don't you go? 
<laughs> okay. Um, um, again, mine are probably not going to be a surprise to Miller Fritz because we've been working on this for a while. Um, mm -hmm. But mine were sort of mainly focused on how could we create the diverse housing that doesn't exist at the moment. So, for example, and I liked Fritz's term spot zoning for some kind, and I know it's on our list right away. Um, some version of a trailer park or a tiny house village. And I think that that's actually to do with tenure. So um, I don't know how we facilitate that exactly, whether it's an EOI, I don't know if that's facilitated on community land as like a five or 10 year pilot project. Like I'm not quite sure the clear answer to that, but um, it would be really interesting to try and figure out what would be the way to facilitate that. And, and by um, the land tenure, I mean like basically leasing pads. Cause I think that's what, I think that's the key that actually brings the affordability in. Um, and this is something we talked at our last meeting about kind of when we were talking about the different versions of the ownership model, um, like long-term, it's the land value that's I think is killing people. Like, yes, construction costs are high and all of those other things are factors, but the land value is just what sinks deals, right? We can't do it. So if there's some way that we can get a chunk of land that we could use as leasehold in some way um, and put in basic services, and then people could bring a tiny house, they could bring a manufactured home and you know there can be design guidelines and all of that kind of stuff. Um, but uh, that would be huge. Like if there was a way to achieve that, I think that that could have a really, really big impact on affordability because, uh, you know, I'm not a huge fan of them, but manufactured homes are, you know, they are what they are. They're, um, they are very low cost. They can meet code. You know, they can meet the sort of trailer version of CSA or they can meet the billing code um, still at a very low cost. So um, uh, I don't think they're worth discounting um, as, a, as a housing option. Um, and my next one was, uh, I think similar to what Fritz was maybe saying is again, the concept of a spot zoning of, uh, of cluster. So instead of being concentrated in the cove, um, you know, and maybe again, it's an expression of interest. It'd be interesting to know if there are homeowners in different neighborhoods and maybe just say, okay, we're gonna do three across the island in different neighborhoods and people could apply and say, okay, I have this you know, lot with a really old house that's not worth anything. I wanna do a little cluster of three, four, five, six, you know, small homes and, and it'll be developed as a strata or whatever it needs to be. And it allows for some, you know, we call it gentle density into existing neighborhoods. You know, we're like, say, we're not making a sweeping change of rezoning. We're not making all these things, but it just means that you can get some form of different housing into those neighborhoods, whether it's attached, it could be row housing, it could be something else, or whether it's sort of detached little, you know, small houses, I wouldn't say tiny houses, but small houses. Um, I think that could be really interesting. And again, that's something that that council, the municipality could facilitate and it's a private development. So it's not like it takes a lot from, in terms of money or anything of like that from council, it would be a bit of effort for you for some expressions of interest and then a, a rezoning. Um, and, you know, maybe assisting with the cost of that rezoning or proactively, you know, helping with that. So there's some investment on the municipality's part, um, but yeah, maybe it's done under, um, sorry, Maureen, what's those, is it the collaborative service agreement or something, a, a version of that? I don't know whether it's appropriate for this one, but maybe there's some version of that that's um, like a, a cooperation between a one, a, a private owner and the municipality and they work together to achieve this thing that would be a better outcome for housing for the island. Um, and then my third one, uh, again, it's more of a concept, it's not concrete, is how to actively encourage uh, sort of multifamily, whether that's townhouse or duplex developments, which is really missing. Um, so again, whether that's an EOI for a certain part of community land, or it's maybe I'm saying the same thing, it's it's a, a partnership with a developer to, to help facilitate or, or lower the costs or take the risk out of uh, rezoning. Um, I'm not sure, but I'm just trying to think of ways that municipality with reasonably low cost, if any, and reasonably low risk to the municipality can partner with private development. Because I think like the municipality is not really in a position to like become a developer, right? And like invest a bunch of money. So it's like, what tools do they have in their power? And it's, you know, rezoning, it's potentially, you know, partnering on community lands, it's those kinds of things. So how can they partner with a, with a private developer to facilitate this kind of housing? Um, and what's a benefit to the developer and what's a benefit to the municipality. So, um, yeah, I feel like a broken record though. We've kind of been talking about that. So I apologize. I have no new ideas, <laughs> but those are my top things that I thought of. Um, so Daniel, do you want to go next? And I think Michael, we still have Michael on the line. He's just turned his video off. So, um, no, actually, we'll to... actually oh. I haven't, I've gone to Google docs and I'm oh. trying to find the rest of the screen because it seems to oh. have taken everything over. So, um, oh dear. Okay. Let now, if I come out of Google Docs, I, I still seem to have lost uh, lost you. Oh, dear. Okay, we'll keep listening. So at least we can hear you and hopefully you can hear us. 
There you are. Um, oh, okay, we're back. Oh, we're back we in can real see life. You. Okay, yeah. good. <laughs> no, um, no. So, Daniel, why don't you go ahead, and then we can we can hear from Maureen and Michael what they've what they thought. Sure. I mean, similar things. I think to one of mine was you know looking at lowering the lot size for detached secondary suites. Um, the other would be uh, a number of years ago. Now we rezoned property at the top of Rivendell. Um, top of Cates Hill for, for duplex zoning. So it could be expanding that zoning to other areas mm -hmm. or similar zoning. So essentially it's allowing, you know, instead of a house in a secondary suite, allowing two units that can be sold individually. Mm -hmm. um, and then the third one is looking at, you have the tiny home village development. And maybe, maybe that's something the housing advisory committee does is put out a call to interested landowners to say, you know, do you want to work on a development? Hmm. Okay. Oh, sorry. Hang on, sorry. <laughs> well, that would be interesting to know if we could have the, you know, approval and authority to kind of start a conversation like that. And I think that would have to be a directive from council to say like, yes, housing advisory committee, you can, you know, take the initiative and do some of the legwork to, to try to find some interested parties and maybe vet them a little bit or whatever and then start a conversation. But yeah, I'm assuming we'd have to get a little bit of direction from council to, to have any authority to go to the community. But that's a great idea, Daniel. Yeah, I like it. And you're right, anything like that gets, gets that tricky bit in terms of like, how does council encourage a rezoning with one hand and then with the other hand, like evaluate it and make sure you're you know, judging that accordingly. And so people, like the neighbors don't feel like, well, this is just a, you know, they've made this deal and now they're just gonna approve it without sort of due diligence. Yeah. Yeah, it's tricky. But I mean, council went through the exercise of rezoning their own property. So I'm imagining it's sort of yeah. in the similar vein, because obviously, they rezoned somewhat in the council's, you know, municipality's own interest, which hopefully is the community's interest. So I would, I think, hopefully, we could frame it that way. It's like, look, we're doing this proactively, because it's, in, we feel it's in the community's best interest. But, you know, still following, I think that's a great point, still following, yeah. you know, the process and, and getting the feedback from neighbors and all of that kind of stuff. But that's a good point. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Can you say something or is it more we're waiting for? Go ahead, Fritz. No, no. If you want to comment on something Daniel said. Yeah, a few things. Because, like, um, the city of Vancouver did give some thought to these things. And, um, for instance, if you are already allowing a detached secondary suite, a coach house, right? What they did is, I thought it was fairly um, smart. They said an RS1 and an RS5, which are single family neighborhoods. Mm -hmm. um, they specifically said no coach house if you go if you go duplex. And the interesting thing about that is, and this is scarce still, okay, for instance, right? Um, where you can do these duplexes, but it's written that the the garden space stays the same. The maximum volume of the house stays the same. And you do not get buildings into the gardens, which actually takes away the landscape and affects the character of the neighborhood the most. That's one thing the city did, but I thought it was kind of clever. So then what's the difference? If you have a house with a coach house where a family or a couple lives, or you have a duplex. In both cases, you have two units. And there will always, always be a conditional approval. It is not like you meet the bylaw and you can move a half. There's always some kind of condition. The other thing that the city of Vancouver did, which is also smart, I thought, is that for small homes, they have this new term, which is lock-off suites. And you think, well, what's the difference? I think the idea about the lock-off suite is that it's flexible and it can easily be reconnected to the house. So there has to be something in place that makes it um, clear that it's not, it is not like somebody moves into your lock-off suite and now they have the right to live there the next 25 years or so. You know what I mean? The idea is that it, it fills the gap for all kinds of different reasons. And I think that if you would have, again, the two-tier zoning and you allow these things to happen, you know, the way the, the, the RS1 single-family zone describes duplex is not even using the word duplex. <laughs> they say it's in a single-family zone and the key objective is to maintain the single-family character of the neighborhood. In that you can do all kinds of things, but it's still it's it's written to to be comfortable and and actually have low impact. Hmm. 
Great. Thank you. Um, okay. So Maureen, do we want to go to you? Sure. Um, a number of the points have already been mentioned. The uh, reducing the uh, uh, acreage for building secondary suites, the mobile home um, idea, the expression of interest for a project on on the community lands, and that will be coming up when we have our joint meeting with um, the mayor's standing committee on community lands. So that's already uh, underway uh, a bit. Um, the other items I, I would add would be uh, revisiting the concept of a housing corporation to see whether it is any more appropriate now than it was deemed in the, in the past. Um, and uh, hosting uh, or requesting a committee of the whole with council um, to go through some of these ideas and to help them you know, understand uh, the situation on island um, and also the pros and cons of some of the ideas that we're talking about. Okay, great. Excellent. Uh, Michael, do you want to go ahead? And I'm just going to, yeah. I'm just going to contain my dogs. I, I don't want them barking in the back. So if I disappear, I'll be back. Okay. No, very briefly, because a lot of stuff has been said, but we do have our needs assessment and we do have land and some other people have land. Mm -hmm. So if a very small group got together and said, okay, how about we try to be the, the facilitating group that put, put actually went out and looked for either public developer, uh, uh, private developers or private individuals who have an interest in this type of development and we actually help them and handhold them through the process. Yeah. So what I'm trying to say in a sentence is what most of you have said much more eloquently in a, in a paragraph, um, in as much as that it really needs a small targeted group to handhold people through this process. And that same group could also actually, and I don't know quite who we would involve to help us with this, go out and look for people who are developers and we could actually advertise it to our own people on island because we need to make the process more obvious and public that we're looking for this type of, of development which people will understand and then we need someone to help walk them through the process so don't leave them stranded or to fill in forms they actually need a go-to person who's going to see it through to a to z if we did that between developers private individuals we might get some of the housing we're looking for so desperately underway, but it would need a very a, a visible go-to group to, to help make this work and act as, a act as facilitators. Yeah. I, I think, and correct me if I'm wrong here, I think most of the on-island developers have a pretty decent, if not a good understanding of how development works here. Yeah, and um, I was thinking, I was thinking as well, you know, um, amongst the other municipalities throughout the metro region, there are quite a lot of developers. And I'm wondering whether that's an untapped resource. We're yeah. not necessarily looking for the big billboard names, yeah. but those people working. And we also would need to find someone who could help us uh, isolate who these folk are so that with a well, well structured, easy to follow package, uh, we might entice their interests on, on the island, whereas before they just passed us over because there are always other places. So we're actually kind of advertising it as well, promoting it. I, I, some flags go up for, for me in, in, in that approach. And, and one is the, the scale of development that would be required to entice somebody from off island, I imagine would be really big and would frighten um, Islanders. Whereas some of the discussion that we've been having about um, small scale um, development that may be a, a, a private landowner who, as I forget who it was, I think it might have been you, Robin, who, who mentioned, you know, big chunk of land, really crappy house, would like to do something socially conscious, so on. That kind of development, I could see 
finding a much stronger, finding much stronger support on on island than something something larger scale. So the developers that I see, and again, correct me if I'm wrong, but the developers I see as requiring um, support and information and handholding are the small scale, the small scale private individual who has an idea and is probably going to take a lot of work to get through that process. So they, they would not be fast, but they, they might result in a product that is more in keeping because we've always got that tension between, um, and I know, I know some are not fond of the term, but the, the conservation development tension. You know, do you conserve, do you develop? And the folks from off island I can see as primarily their objective would be to develop. Uh, yes, I, I think it would. A couple of things. I think there are some smaller developers out there. Not everyone is huge. Some of them are really, really, really quite small. And some of them have quite boutique projects. Um, and also they're bringing some interesting ideas to, to the table. So it's not until we actually cast our net out a little bit, but I do agree with you. We're not talking about big developers here. We're talking about small, small, small. We're talking about small developers because big developers are not, not going to come to the island. It's a waste of their time and hours. We're not so, inviting the Concords and the Anis to come and build some towers or anything. <laughs> no, 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 no. I, but, but I think, I think it's, e it's easy to sweep aside that the smaller, the smaller people out, are out there. And they're sometimes looking for places to do some interesting developments with, which are good for them. They're not all big developers. Some of them are really quite small and very nimble, agile companies with with young teams as well. So I know they're off island, but hey, if, 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 it, if there was that much on island, we wouldn't be having this conversation. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. The first question normally is, is the zoning in place? Yeah, well, that is where, where, where we can. We, we've done it already to some extent. Yeah. And if we were zoning something specifically for rental accommodation, for this type of accommodation, I, I don't see that causing any great uh, angst if we were very clear and specific about what we were doing. Because mm. everybody knows we need this type of accommodation. It, 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 one would like to think that, well, well spoken for, it wouldn't be controversial. Mm. Could, could I ask something? Um, what type of accommodation are we talking about? Well, it's whatever. What, what's 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 be it's, it's what is uh, from our from our assessment. Because we've got rental, rental, rental. Yeah. The assessment says everything is needed. Yes. So we need to take from that assessment and say, based on what we know, here's here's what the priorities are, and it's it's got to be rental. Yes. And lower cost home ownership. Yes. And. Well, and mine, mine are in terms of priority is these diverse housing types. We have so few condos. We have no basically or almost no townhouses um, and very few, you know, duplexes. So it's those kinds of things, you know, like, you know, for example, most communities have, say, like a, a family oriented townhouse complex that that is affordable versus, say, a single family house to young families. We just don't have anything like that. And so it used to be that, you know, you could go out the further bits on the island or get the really old kind of crappy house in the nice street on the island. But now, you know, with housing prices, especially this last year, I think people are completely priced out. So having that diversity um, and that mix, I think that's a really high priority. And even whether it's rental or ownership, I, I'm not, you know, advocating for one or the other, but um, it's, it's that diversity, um, figuring out how to create that. So with many times it actually sits in the zoning. So you can say a building has to be 100% rental or you can say a building has to have a percentage of that. Or like, uh, or affordable housing many times is a percentage of the building. Of course, it's nice if it's 100%, but I think a lot of communities do it with percentages. Like the city of Vancouver does it with percentages. And they apply that to be landless, and therefore they get some affordable housing. <laughs> mm. But I'm just wondering is that if you if you say okay, there is. I mean, I'm not. 
I think all rent is fine, but then if it's not happening, then um, if you can actually make the the more expensive units pay for the rental, that's a formula too. So I'm just going to jump back and look at Glenn's comments just because he's not here. So why don't we kind of just skim over those? So he had some uh, established maximum housing size. Um, and I think he actually offered some. Uh, and I can't, he does cite the source um, for a single detached row house and half duplex, um, requiring how new houses to be suite ready, getting rid of the mobile home prohibition, implementing an FSR, two-tiered zoning, uh, reduced parking for detached housing, particularly for neighborhoods adjacent to Snug Cove, and then about allow flexibility in higher densities and building heights. Um, floating height limits within two or three blocks allow incremental development within neighborhoods. It's an interesting idea. Um, disallow uh, short-term rentals. So that's I think that's a big can of worms that we've been through the last couple of years. So I don't know if we'll put too much conversation to that one. Um, and... He's got a couple of other notes here. Um, so yeah, okay. Um, just so housing surveys. Okay, so for today, because we've got about 15 minutes left, I don't think we have any other business. So we can sort of focus on, unless we do stuff, I don't think we have any other business. So we're, we have 15 minutes left. I'm wondering if we want to focus, what do we want to have come out of today? Um, so I've sort of taken notes. We have a list of, of all of the ideas we've all put together. Uh, Maureen, I like your idea of, of maybe a committee of the whole. Um, I'm assuming it would be in the fall. It wouldn't be anytime too soon. Um, so I don't know how we go about booking that in. And then maybe that's something as a as a committee we can work towards producing like just a small report or a sum, at least a summary of these and um, having that sort of meeting. Is there an appetite, do you think, for from council to have a committee of the whole and then have some or all of this committee attend and, and discuss? Uh, personally, I think there would be interest. Okay, and how do we- Last year of the four year term. Yeah. I think they would be interested in, in hearing, okay, you know, where might we make some further movement? Yeah, okay. I can work with Hope on that, Robin. Okay, that'd be great, thanks, Beth. Okay, so let's see- Do you think so there would be if... value in getting the, like seeing what comes out of the joint meeting with the Mayor's Standing Committee? Yeah, or... I think so, because that's the end of this month. Yeah, and I'm assuming we wouldn't get on the schedule for like July and then August is off, right? So I would think we'd be looking into the, the fall, like September, October. Like October maybe? because I'm thinking, so yeah, okay. September is pretty busy. Mm -hmm. So yeah, maybe we ask for October and that gives us a bit of time to have a couple more meetings and discuss things and put yeah, together maybe, some recommendations. If we could maybe structure this recommendations, very mm -hmm. items that are really easy to do. Like, this council may be able to do that quickly. There may be something that takes a year or something that is a some more term, uh, you know, um, endeavor. Yeah, well, we've got these notes so we can definitely sort of consolidate these because there was lots of repetition. And I think we've got a lot of them before from our other work. And yeah. maybe it's just a matter of then consolidating them and prioritizing them and maybe fleshing out some of the details, you know, like actually getting a little bit more into the details of how we think that might work or providing samples. Like for example, I've done some research on the cluster housing, you know, zoning, having those as samples. Um, maybe we dig through and find an EOI that we could provide as a sample for how this might work. Um, you know, the, I think providing those kinds of resources that uh, Maureen, Michael, would that, kind of stuff be useful? Like what would be useful for you as counselors? Examples. Okay. Cautionary tales. <laughs> okay. okay. Sorry, Maureen, why, why uh, sorry, um, you've, <laughs> cautionary tales, sorry. Oh, just um, where a municipality uh, undertook a bright idea that went sideways. Oh, I see. Yeah. Okay, yeah, yeah, I'm with you. All Do right. you mean Maureen like the process went sideways or like the results went sideways? Because they're more the different. process. Right. Right. Yeah. <laughs> Did this one come to mind, Daniel? You look amused. No, I'm just thinking they're 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 different different ways it can go sideways, right? Like it goes sideways and doesn't happen versus what well, happened and then it was bad. <laughs> <laughs> well, we could do both. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Okay. Daniel, um, how does this sound to you? Good? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, sort of my hope always had been that like, I would finish the sort of the, the first round of land use bylaw amendments and then it would be, okay, let's look at actual changes. Yeah. 
now, you know, I started that one in 2018. So it's like three years later. And then yeah. <laughs> you're almost there. You're so close. <laughs> Maybe we'll see. Um, <laughs> but yeah, but that makes sense to me. Like that sounds yeah. good. The other one I was thinking of is like Ron's suggestion about bringing developers on. And I know that's something we talked about. Maybe that's something like Steph and Robin and I could schedule just for our next meetings. We just like as the start of a meeting, it's like there's a delegation who's a developer on Bowen who can talk, you know, for 30 minutes and say, this is what I perceive as challenges. Hmm, yeah, that's a great have, idea. It doesn't have to go anywhere as a meeting, but then it's information for the committee. Um, yes, yes. I think that's a great idea. Yeah. yeah. Generally, I think like when I, when I talk to the on-island developers, yeah, they're always thinking about it and they always have ideas, but at the same point, they sort of focus on, well, this is what I can do and, you know, this is what works right now. I'm not going to. Mm. necessarily so go would that be an open I think so and it's just sort of their their observations like mm. would you th- would you would invite somebody or we would just put an open call out oh I think I would invite people okay. like there's only so many there's only so many on island developers on Bowen right I could make a list of four people and we'd be like okay that's pretty good yeah yeah and see who's available and I think our next meeting would be September wouldn't it yeah so we could probably sort of start that process I think that's a great idea Maureen we invite them to the committee of the whole. Yeah. Like have have our report and have a developer there, so the council would hear as well as as us. Does that make sense? So do you yeah. mean instead of or as well as instead of as well of, as? as, well well. as. Okay. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Okay. Does that make sense? Okay. It does. It yeah. does. Absolutely. And if for some reason they can't make it, we can always, you know, summarize or if they all can't make it or whoever, maybe some can make it to one meeting and some can make it to the other. And then we can sort of summarize the feedback from our meeting and, and bring that to the, the committee, the whole kind of thing. We could, yeah. run this, we could run this idea by the mayor's standing committee as yep. well, because they have been talking about doing something along these lines for a while and just haven't moved on it. Okay. Mm-hmm. It would be a way of, of moving yeah. on some of our objectives and some of the standing committee. And maybe the standing committee is coming to that, that committee of the whole as well. I don't want to make it too full of an agenda, but um, if we're all in the same room at the same time and talking about the same, like focused on housing, not specifically community lands, but yeah. community lands in relation to what else is going on the island in terms of housing. Let's yeah. talk about it at our, our meeting later in the month. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and they're, they're, no, you know, there's slightly yeah. different focuses too. But some of our recommendations are, you know, what we've talked about today are sort of opening it up, like other land opening up for additional housing versus the active developers on the island are pretty much looking at, well, what can I do on like our current projects and land yeah. we currently have that's vacant. Mm-hmm. It's like a different focus and different than the mayor standing committee, which is looking at what can we do on community lands, but, but they're all good focuses to look at. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And it's just whether we're putting maybe too much into one meeting and whether we need to, yeah, like split it into, okay, this is what we can do with private developers and we can put them. And then maybe this is a separate thing on community land, but maybe they are this, it's maybe there's enough overlap that it is the same conversation. I'm not sure we could have to talk about it. If you go back to not making it too ambitious and you have like one or two ideas and one or two examples, right. And then you ask people to respond, then in a way you, you don't, it doesn't really disperse too much, but you get feedback on what you're truly interested in. And like, it's almost like you have to design the agenda for the meeting <laughs> and see how it pans out. <laughs> mm-hmm. like, I think a lot of people are willing to respond, but or you say to well, other people just divert in any direction if you want, but then a large group is a bit so- I want to make sure we follow this up. So who should take the lead in, in figuring out what developers we invite and how we craft that invitation? Because so I'd like your idea, Fritz. I think it would be good to write to them to say, hey, would you like to come to, you know, we have two opportunities. It could be one, the Housing Advisory Committee to the Committee of the Whole. Um, here's the ideas that we have. We want to hear your feedback on these ideas and what ideas you have, right? Like it's kind of both. I think it's a good idea to give them some of the thoughts we have and get their feedback, but then also just kind of an open-ended question of like, what feedback do you have? How can we make things easier? What's holding you back, right? From doing this kind of development. Yeah, um, so that, have, that, yeah. You have to give them one or two ideas 
And then if they respond with more ideas and many the same ones that we already have identified, then we give them credit for that. But um, what, what I'm trying to say is that um, if you would have, a, if there's too many uh, items on the menu, then I also think you, it's harder for them to respond and to be more firm in their answers. So, sorry, say that again, Fritz. So should we give them ideas to respond to or you're saying leave it open for them to come to us? No, I think we'll, we'll, we'll have maybe one or two examples, you know, okay. and maybe that is based on, uh, well, of course, what we think is right, but maybe we can find an example in another community or so. That means you have all kinds of crap to stop right away, you know, and say for one, and if there's a piece of land that that can actually happen on, as an example, mm -hmm. maybe it is the community lands, you know, but it should be in a way because that's what we have. And, <laughs> you mm -hmm. know, and do that because then it's more like, um, I think a lot of contractors are like that, you know, they, they can give feedback. You just have to ask them a good question. <laughs> mm -hmm. um, and the only final point, sorry, and I forgot to mention it earlier, and one thing we've discussed before that I'd love to bring to the Committee of the Whole would be a recommendation from us on um, targets for housing. Yeah. So other municipalities have done this. They've created targets, whether it's, you know, five years, 10 years, 15 years, whatever that looks like, um, is actually setting those and um, whatever that, um, yeah, whatever those targets look like. So I'd like to, for us to discuss that and maybe have a recommendation and, and that can be then discussed at the meeting with council. Um, so sorry, just because in the, we've got five minutes left. So I just want to make sure who's, who, what's the best way for us to approach developers um, to come to this? And I know, we're saying, Maureen, maybe we'll wait till the mayor's standing committee and talk to them about it and then like jointly issue some kind of invitation because uh, we don't want to be stepping on each other's toes, right? So. Um, Personally, I think that makes sense. Okay. Yeah. The, the committee, this, the uh, mayor standing uh, committee of the community lands is for the community lands. So it's not the difficult, really. You say, mm -hmm. from, oh, would you like to do something on the community lands? Mm -hmm. uh, since that committee is not to intended to step outside of there. Right? Yeah. Well, and I'm wondering, sorry, I'm just throwing this idea out there. Instead of maybe coming to the Housing Advisory Committee, would we proactively invite them instead to this joint meeting? Or do we have enough on the agenda for the joint meeting that, that that's... Um, do yeah. we have to decide that right now? Or? <laughs> no, no, not necessarily. I, I think we have enough to do at the joint meeting, the joint meeting. Um, in pinning down um, some of the details of the EOI for Okay. Okay. So let's leave that. So, let, and then let's put it. So maybe Steph, could you add to the joint meeting agenda to talk about an invitation to developers to future HAC meeting and a future COW? And we'll just, I think it's worth just, it won't take a big discussion, but just to make sure we're all on the same page, we don't want to be reaching out separately to talk to the developers to be respectful of their time. Um, okay, great. Um, did we achieve what we'd hoped to achieve? Oh, sorry, Steph. I was skipping over what you were saying just about the next meeting. You said September. I'm just worried about September. I'm wondering if, how the counselors feel about easing into a little bit of August. Or how is um, your September, counselors? I know there's in, UBCM in there. Oh yeah. And well, it depends on how's. Uh, what the decision is taken with UBCM, whether it's going to be another Zoom issue oh, right. or whether we're going to meet in person. If it's a Zoom, then it really didn't take up so much of our time. Okay. Frank, Frank, it lost a huge momentum. So it, it's it's less of an event. But you're right that September is... Uh, sure. Yeah, I mean, people like myself have an Islands Trust three-day meeting in the middle of one week. So as I look which at... One is, which week is that? The twenty, the beginning Monday, the twentieth of September. Uh, uh, of September, yes. So, are people um, like this? Is today's the fifth? Maybe like the eighth of September. Wednesday, the eighth. At the moment, my calendar is free. Yeah. Uh, yeah. At the moment, um, you know, it's interesting. Or Tuesday that, or well, Tuesday. That Tuesday, that month. Tuesday, that month. Tuesday, 30 days, and I only see four at the moment where something isn't marked in it. <laughs> um, you like Friday morning, so you know, 9.30 on Friday morning, sir? 
Um, for August is, um, could we do the, in the last couple of days of August? I, was, like I guess I'm just speaking from myself that we've, we've got yeah. a community center meeting the last week of August. I think there's another community that's squeezing something in. So if you guys were willing to do that, I'm not going to fight you on it. But like on the 30th or 31st, would that be acceptable to people of August? Uh, it doesn't work for me. I've okay. Not, not, not the 31st. Okay. And maybe that Friday the 3rd of September? I know that's right before the long weekend. I don't know if people are... But what about Friday the 10th? Uh, yeah, I, my schedule is quite open at, that, at this point, so I'm pretty flexible. Friday yeah. the 10th, that work for people? Seeing nods mm -hmm. at this point. Come on, Sherry. I, I think it works for me at this point. Okay. 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 Yeah. Fritz, any objections? Nine, 9 30 Friday. The yeah. Um, yeah. <laughs> my, my weeks follow up normally the week before. <laughs> or two yeah. Weeks before. Oh, I know. That's. Well, we can tweak it. Let's just have something in there. Yeah. Yes. As a place, as a placeholder, I have to agree. So what time is it? Like on Friday the 10th? 9.30, Friday, September 10th. All right. And, okay. I mean, if I'm organizing a cow with hope, then I, I just need to make sure there's going to be some kind of a recommendation coming out of the housing committee before that in October. Right. Right. Okay, great. So okay. next meeting on the 10th. And, okay. um, and then maybe if we need to, we can... Uh, no, no. Let me know, um, Steph, about summarizing the Google Doc stuff. I don't know if we want to put that in the minutes, like some of the notes or anything. Okay, um, so maybe I can talk with you offline about these notes. Yeah. Okay. Let's okay. do that. Steph and I can talk. And yeah. Okay. And yeah. Just, just to remind us, in our um, in our minutes, our September meeting has um, purposes. Yeah. Um, it's identifying the advantages to development of density outside the cove and setting targets. Right, so that's okay. the target that, that I was talking about. Perfect. Yep. Yeah. Okay, great. Okay. Okay, I think that's good. Any, anything else, everybody, before we close the meeting? Final thoughts, comments? No, just on time, 301. That's pretty good. Way to go, Robin, um, thank you. Yeah. Okay, so we'll adjourn and let me know if there's anything else. Otherwise, for those of you that can join us, it's um, I 